so hello students today let us see another uh, syndrome or a condition uh, around the knee joint known as the plica syndrome so a synovial plica actually it is a self like membrane between the synovium of the patella and the tibiofemoral joint and it essentially consists of mesenchymal tissue which is formed in the knee during the embryological phase of development and this tissue form membranes which divides the knee into three compartments the medial the lateral tibiofemoral and the suprapatellar bursa so the elastic nature of this uh, synovial membrane known as plicae allow normal movement of the bones of the tibiofemoral joint without restriction and yet when repeating sorry repeating the same knee movements too often such as bending and straightening or in case of a trauma to the knee this plicae sometimes can become irritated and inflamed and this results in a disorder called this plica syndrome it actually refers to an internal derangement of the knee which prevents normal functioning of the knee joint so if you see the clinical uh, relevant anatomy in the knee joint here this is the membranous structure called the plica this is the patella this is the patella tendon and the location of the plica you can see here so there may be medial and lateral and different types which we are going to see in details and the main function is for the smooth movements of the knee joints knee joint now there are four types of plica which can be distinguished depending on the anatomical location within the knee joint cavities they are suprapatellar mediopatellar infrapatellar and lateral plicae so the last one is rarely seen and therefore there is some controversy regarding its existence or its exact nature so the plicae in the knee joint can vary in both structure and size they can be fibrous or fatty longitudinal or crescent shaped let us see the suprapatellar plicae referred to as the plica synovialis synovialis or sometimes suprapatellaris sometimes superior plica sometimes supramedial plica uh, medial suprapatellar plica or septum which is a domed crescent shaped septum that uh, generally lies between the suprapatellar bursa and the tibiofemoral joint of the knee it runs downward from the synovium at the anterior side of the femoral metaphysis to the posterior side of the quadriceps tendon inserting above the patella so based on an arthroscopic investigation the suprapatellar plicae can again generally be classified by location and shape into different types which was done by Kim and Coe in 1997 so they found that sometimes it is absent no sharp edged fold is there and sometimes it is a kind of a vestigial which is less than 1 mm protrusion disappeared with external pressure and sometimes they found that the medial plica lying on the medial side of the suprapatellar pouch lateral plica lying on the lateral side of the suprapatellar pouch when the arch plica present medially laterally and anteriorly but not over the anterior femur whole plica extending completely across the suprapatellar pouch but with a central defect so that is why it is called the hole then the complete plica dividing the suprapatellar pouch into two separate compartments this is something about the suprapatellar plica coming to the medial the medial patellar plica also known as the plica synovialis medial patellaris medial synovial shelf plica alaris elongata medial parapatellar plica meniscus of the patella or its uh, two description uh, as lion's band or acoys ledge so it is generally found along the medial wall of the joint it attaches to the lower patella and the lower femur crosses the suprapatellar plica to insert into the synovium surrounding the infrapatellar fat pad 
its free border can have different appearances. As the medial plica is attached to the synovium covering the fat pad and ligamentum patella, it also changes dimension and orientation during the knee movements. The medial plica is also known to be the most commonly injured plica due to its anatomical location. And it's usually this plica which is uh, uh, implicated uh, when describing the plica syndrome. This is the plica which is actually we stress. Then comes uh, infrapatella. It is also called as ligamentum mucosum, plica synovialis, infrapatellaris, infra inferior plica or anterior plica. It is a fold of synovium which originates from a narrow base in the intercondylar notch extends distally in front of the anterior cruciate ligament and inserts into the inferior part of the infrapatellar fat band. It is often difficult to differentiate the infrapatellar plica from the anterior cruciate ligament. Mostly it appears as a thin cord like fibrous band and the infrapatellar plica is considered to be the most common plica in the human <coughs> knee. Then the lateral plica, it is also known as plica synovialis lateralis or lateral parapatellar plica. It is longitudinal thin and is located 1 to 2 cm lateral to the patella. It is formed as a synovial fold along the lateral wall above the popliteus hiatus muscle extending inferiorly and inserting into the synovium of the infrapatellar pad. So that were some of the types. Now coming to the etiology, mostly the uh, these are asymptomatic and of little clinical consequence. However, they can become symptomatic when they are injured or irritated. This can be as a result of various conditions such as direct trauma or blow to the plica, blunt trauma, twisting injuries, repetitive flexion and extension of the knee, increased activity levels, weakness of the vastus medialis muscle, intra-articular bleeding, osteochondritis desiccans, uh, torn meniscus, chronic or transient synovitis. So these are some uh, factors responsible for this condition and when the initial injury has healed some patient can be symptom free for some time but then suddenly anterior pain can develop over a week or over a month later. The term plica syndrome is used to refer to the internal derangement of the knee caused by an inflammation or injury to the suprapatellar, medial patellar or lateral plica or a combination of the three which prevents normal functioning of the knee joint. The medial is known to be the most commonly injured due to its anatomical location. The plica syndrome does often the result of excessive use of the knee and is therefore often encountered in people engaged in exercises involving repeated flexion extension of movements such as the ones in cycling, running team sports, gymnastics, swimming, rowing sports and also seen particularly in uh, common in adolescent athletes. Clinical presentation when it becomes pathologic, the plica, the usual characteristics of this tissue will change due to the inflammatory process which we all know. So they may become hypertrophic, show increased vascularity, uh, high ins insertion uh, and lose their typical characteristics and they lose their elastic connective tissue properties. As a result, they may also become edematous, thickened and fibrotic and they will most certainly intervene in the normal patellofemoral movements. Chronic, when it is a long term over a period, chronic cases will show fibrocartilaginous metaplasia, increasing collagenation and calcification. Particularly, the medial patella plica may go string across the trochlea and the medial femoral condyles or impinge between the medial patella facet and the medial condyle when flexing the knee. Over time, this might lead to softening and degeneration, which we otherwise called as chondromalacia, or even erosion of the cartilage of the medial patellar facet and the trochlea. The plica will intrude in the patellofemoral joint usually between 30 and 50 degree of flexion further subluxing over the medial femoral condyle.
The same mechanism can be seen with a pathological lateral plica, but in that case, the lateral femoral condyle will be affected. A pathological suprapatellar plica will impinge between the quadriceps tendon and the femoral trochlea. Plica syndrome can cause a series of uh, clinical symptoms such as pain, clicking, crepitus, popping, effusion, localized swelling, reduced range of motion, intermittent medial joint pain, instability and locking of the patellofemoral joint and so on. It is more commonly seen in teenagers and young adults also seen in women than more in women than in men. The pain can be located at different places like suprapatella and the mid patellar region when extending the knee. Cracking noises can be heard when flexing of the extending the knee, extended knee. The combination of contracting the cordyceps and the compression of the suprapatella pouch can also be the cause of the pain. So we have seen the clinical signs and symptoms. So we have to now uh, rule out some other Mm, uh, cases which might uh, uh, produce the same kind of pain which is like the patellar femoral syndrome, the patellar bipartite, bipartite, the patellar maltracking, the degenerative joint disease, the Hoffa syndrome that is the fat pad uh, inflammation or the uh, sinding larsen johansson disease, medial collateral ligament sprain, osteochondritis desiccans, pace uh, and serenus bursitis, uh, meniscal tears, patella maltracking. So these may be some of the differential uh, diagnosis which we have to rule out. Diagnostic procedures, since it is a soft tissue, uh, arthroscopy and MRI will be best because in X-ray it will not be anything evident. Arthroscopy can be helpful because the plica syndrome is often confused with the control malaysia or a medial meniscal tear. Lateral pneumoarthrography and double contrast arthrography have been used in varying cases. In combination with CT, it can also, uh, it can only visualize the plica, but it also demonstrates whether or not impingement is present. Another investigation is MRI and the best results are obtained through MRI scans. Most cases of plica syndrome do not absolutely require MRI, but it can help to rule out other pathologies that can cause the knee pain. So an MRI excludes bone bruises, meniscus tears, ligament uh, injuries and cartilage defects, uh, OCD lesions that may uh, precipitate as plica syndrome. MRI is uh, useful to evaluate the thickness and extension of the signable plica and it can also detect a pathological plica particularly if an intraarticular effusion is present. Coming to the outcome measures, knee injuries and osteoarthritis outcome score is one of the score. Then in examination one of the most important point is diagnosing medial synovial plica pathology in obtaining an appropriate history from the patient. Pain is often described as a dull pain in the proximo-medial uh, proximo aspect of the knee and around the border of the patella. Frequently there is an internal hydrops or an string palpable, a band type of thing palpable. The pain increases with activity overuse and is practically bothersome at night sometimes. Patients have complaints when uh, coming down stairs, uh, doing squats and standing up from a chair because these movements create stress on the patellar femoral joint. Specific physical tests for the diagnosis of a, diagnosis of a medial plica include the plica and the medial patellar plica stutter tests. Yet the plica stutter test will not work then when the joint is swollen. Other methods may include the MacMurray's, the Apley's or the instability uh, and the Cabot's test. Other provocation tests for the diagnosis of medial plica syndrome can be the knee extension test, flexion test or the medial patellar like a test MPP. For the active extension test, a quick extension of the TBI is performed as if making a kicking movement. Test is considered positive when painful because of the abrupt tension on the plica from the quadriceps femoris muscle. The flexion test is performed by quickly swinging the tibia from a position of full extension into flexion and interrupting the swing between 30 and 60 degrees of flexion. This is again positive when there is pain as the plica is then stretched with eccentric contraction of the quadriceps muscle. 
to apply a snap test is another test which can be used to verify if there is irritation of the medial plica for the palpation of the medial synovial plica the patient lies supine on the examining table with both legs relaxed for the medial synovial plica the examiner palpates the ligament by rolling the fingers over the plica fold which is located between the medial border of the patella and the adductor tubercular region of the medial femoral condyle under the finger which uh, rolls directly against the underlying medial femoral condyle the ligament will be present itself as a ribbon like fold of tissue this test is positive when it reproduces symptoms such as sensation of mild pain the medial uh, management medical sorry sorry the medical management coming to the medical management the treatment of a plica syndrome should initially be conservative like pain relieving sometimes by rest using uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs applying physiotherapy in case the treatment treatment does not improve or in case symptoms aggravate the physician can use intraplical or intra articular corticosteroid injections however uh, this approach appears to have uh, better results in young people and in patients with only short term symptoms if non operative measures fail surgery should be considered surgery involves an arthroscopy where the plica is removed it is important to have the entire plica removed in order to avoid fibrosis or reformation of a plica like structure followed by recurrence of the pain and symptoms however capsular integrity and retinacular structure should be carefully maintained while resecting the plica as injury might lead to patellar subluxation post operative rehabilitation after plica resection usually goes quickly it is recommended starting 48 to 72 hours post op to prevent intra articular scarring and stiffness of the knee uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs can be prescribed to reduce the risk of intra articular fibrosis and to protect against plica recurrence most patients can resume sporting activities within 3 to 6 weeks coming to pt management like the cryotherapy for the pain relief in an in an inflammation others include the lifestyle modifications uh, by reducing the aggravating activities by changing the daily physical activities to reduce repetitive flexion and extension movements and by correcting biomechanical abnormalities like tight hamstrings weak quads additionally uh, short wave micro diaphragmic phonophoresis ultrasound or a friction massage might be considered beneficial friction massage is also used in this therapy to break down scar tissue occasionally immobilization of the knee in extended position for a few days can be helpful as well as avoiding maintenance of the knee in flex position during longer periods once the acute inflammation is reduced physical therapy can be initiated aiming at uh, decreasing compressive compressive forces by stretching exercises and increasing quantities of strength and hamstring flexibility treatment is usually recommended for the first 6 to 8 weeks after initial examination it consists of strengthening and improving the flexibility of the muscle adjacent to the knee such as quadriceps hamstrings adductors abductors gastrocnemius and soleus muscle the key components of a rehab program will involve flexibility cardiovascular conditioning training strengthening and returning to the activities of daily living here are some references Uh, so thank you students for uh, viewing this uh, video and i hope this will help you in understanding in a simpler way about the plica syndrome uh, how are the plicas located what is this kind of this plica a membrane like structure which uh, divides the compartment of the knee and how these things can be irritated sometimes by because of trauma or by repetitive movements and what measures we should take for the rehab program so any doubts okay we are um, uh, like uh, we can discuss in the Google Classroom and the WhatsApp groups. So please feel free to discuss the doubts. Thank you.